Well, I've got a great flight for us today. I'm here in Wewak, Papua New Guinea, heading back to my home base in Goroka. It's an hour and 15 minute flight. The weather looks like it should be pretty nice, but progressively getting worse as I get there. We'll go over the weather once we get up in the air. Let's go ahead and get started. Get out of here. It's hot and muggy. Last flight of the day and last flight before my vacation. Look out. Make sure all of our switches are where we want them. Pulls turned on, igniters, low pump, low start. Introduce our fuel once our NG is up and over 14%. Oil pressure's coming in slow, fuel flow's coming in nice. TAWS system test, okay. And ITT peaks out at 6.68. We've got a thousand pounds of fuel on board. We don't need that much, we only need 880 pounds for my IFR reserves back in Nicaragua. But, I don't have everybody on board today, so why not just fill it up with a little bit extra fuel in case the weather's not as planned and Garoka, which, you know, it is PNG, so you never know. And one thing that I have not shown you guys is our flight span app. I'm going to go over that on today's flight because I've never really gone over much with it with you guys. So, so for starters, let's go to the nav page. Let's change our fuel here up to a thousand pounds. I should be landing back in Garoka with 600 pounds. My weight balance, I've got a thousand pounds up there. Our aircraft weight is 4450, which is 4450 on here as well. I don't have anybody on board today. And next is the depart page. Everything looks good, 11,000 going back, one POB. There we go. We'll go over the more on that in just a minute. I'll throw a flight plan in here. We've got some saved ones. So let's go down to Goroka WIWAC and then just do an invert down here. There we go. All stations, WEWAC 1267, Kodiak November Tango Zulu, taxiing runway 10 for departure Garoka. Break Moresby November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu Moresby, copy taxi, no reported traffic. Go ahead, POV. One POV. Tango Zulu. I just came up from Medang on my last flight. It looks like it should be a fairly clear shot to Garoka with just kind of, well, building weather out there. It's still fairly early in the morning. It's like 11.20 in the morning. So we still have a little bit of time. I'm thinking really closer to one o'clock is when it's really gonna start building up and blowing up. We might have to do our instrument um, arrival into Garoka, at least to get into the valley. Probably not the full, full procedure, but at least to get into the valley and then visually get down. All right, our fuel is on, our selectors are good, our controls I've already checked. Up to 11,000. I am empty today, so my weight is 50. 700, so 56 and 65. 65 if I were to come back in. 56 for rotate. We're in Zulu today, so let's get our radar on standby. I forgot to do that before I started taxiing, but it gets the gimbals up and going. Flaps are set, our trims are set. It's top of the T and all the way to the right for takeoff. Once we take off, we'll start getting that right rudder pressure out, but oh, I don't have to stay here with my foot pushed as hard as I can on the climb out. Igniters and lights and inlet are good. All stations, WEWAC, Kodiak, Nova, and Zulu, departing runway 10 for Garoko, beyond climb on 1000. Ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. It is 34 degrees out, so sea level 1520 on the torque. All right, let's go. I feel I'm late today. <laughs> Here we go, We've got a bird right ahead of me, so let's pitch on up. For our 73 knots, our best angle. Now we're over him, now we'll pitch back over. I'm 
kind of keeping my pitch. You can't really tell because I don't have a camera on this yet. I need to get a new one. Around seven and a half degrees on the attitude indicator for my climb out. Once we're over 300, we could start taking our flaps out. And the reason why I'm kind of keeping it at that seven and a half degree mark is so that my speed is about 85 or over. We've done some testing on like, if we were to lose power, is it better to be climbing at 73 to get the most amount of altitude in the shortest distance? Or is it better to have a little bit more airspeed in case of an engine failure and takeoff? And in this airplane, it's better to have airspeed because uh, at 73 knots, it takes about 500 feet to get enough speed to be able to climb back up or to be able to basically even have a best glide. Where 85 takes about 300 feet. So you're saving yourself 200 feet, which uh, you might appreciate someday. And our torque on back, our correction, our prop on back really slowly because I'm at sea level. I don't want to spike my torque. I'll bring our ITT right at 720 for the climb out. Do landing, engine inlet, and igniters turned off. Okay, so. We are moving away from a lot of the paper stuff now. We've been finally approved completely to be able to use a lot of the different features that we have on this app. That's why I haven't really used it or even shared because I just didn't use it because I just didn't care. But now that we don't have to write things down because everything is electronically stored, now I'm starting to. Looking out this way, we've got a bunch of clouds right along these mountains. They go down to the end down here and kind of bleed off into the coast. Uh, Morris B1267, November Tango, Zulu departure. November Tango, Zulu, Morris, we get November Tango, Zulu departed. WeWAC, time 20. Passing 2700, climb 1 1000. Estimating my UE. Stand by. My UE time 52. Roman Tango, Zulu copy departure, no reported traffic over my request to check call 120 decimal 1. No contact return this frequency. 1201 are back with you on this frequency, my UE, no from Nick Zulu. Alright, I hesitated there for a second because it did not have the my UE and the Garoka. It took a second for it to like register how long it was going to take to get there. With like the climb and everything, it's basically doing the calculations. How fast am I climbing and how long is it going to take me to get to my points? So landing at 12. 12.30 in Nagaroka and 11.53 at my UE. And that's one of the features that I haven't really ever used or shared with you guys because I just didn't really care because we would write everything down and I would just do the math in my head. All right, let's get our autopilot on. We'll pitch for a climb for about 100 to 110 knots. Bump up our ITT to 720 for the climb. Looking ahead. Typically, if I have passengers on board, I typically will go all the way down the coast to kind of bypass all these clouds that build up along the mountain range right here, because it ends. Let me zoom out here. You can see this mountain range is a kind of a different color. You can usually go around it all, but it makes it bumpy for people. So one of the cool things that you can do when there's a bunch of clouds is you can get right next to them, like right on the edge of them, and get a bunch of the updrafts, which really help with your climb if you have a ways to go. Okay, as we're doing our climb out here, we'll be connecting into our track here in just a second, but let me show you what I've got for weather available. Um, I'll take a couple of screenshots right before I took off. So here we are, we're leaving out of WeWAC and heading down here to Garoka. This was just a satellite image that I just snapped a photo of, and it looks like there might be a, a little bit of kind of, probably just some clouds. Blue and green typically just means some clouds. Nothing really too special. Maybe with a little bit of moisture in them, but they're not very big yet, so they'll probably be growing. Switching over here to the rain and thunder setting. We've got rain out this way, so it says, but I don't see any rain out there along those north mountains out of Weewak. And just like a bunch of blue, kind of about halfway up to Mayui. So probably just a bunch of clouds and then past Mayui, it looks like it actually kind of clears out a little bit. Going on to, that was at 11, so it's 11.30 now. Going on to 12, back and forth, 
doesn't really much change for my track. And then going on to one, now it starts changing and it starts getting a lot more yellow and green. Potential rain getting in here. I'm heading all the way in to Garoka. Again, the north gaps will probably be fine. So looks like we shouldn't have any troubles getting home today. So let me go over this app here with you guys because it has a lot on it. And yes, it is available for other companies and things like that. I think it was originally designed for what we're doing here in New Guinea in mission flying, but I know that you can couple it with some other businesses as well. So it does a lot of stuff. So it has the top tabs, DFR, NAV, weight balance, and so forth. DFR just stands for daily flight record. And this basically pulls information off of our online um, database. So when people schedule a flight or things like that, it, pu it pulls it from there and puts it in here. So it tells me like the date, who, what airplane, what, what pilots can be flying, if there's any second crew on board. And then uh, down here, your load, that's my loading for the whole day. Not really in chronological order or how I'm going to be flying it, which would be really nice if that could be changed, if it would just automatically spit it out and like in a chronological way that your flight actually goes, because otherwise it's like my first one has Mount Hagen, but then it has some WIWAC, and then it has a Madang, and then it has a Hagen. So it's kind of all just jumbled. So you kind of have to pick out each line item if you're trying to guess how many people you have on board for each flight. And up here at the top, the legs, it shows each one of my legs for today. So I went to Hog and Medang, Wewak, and now I'm on my last one back to Garoka. For some reason, I didn't pick out that I had an engine start the first part of the day. It does that sometimes, I have no idea why. The next tab at the top is my nav, and you can see it has a bunch of little green lines. The green lines are the flights I've already done. The magenta line is the one I'm on right this minute. And then down here at the bottom, the legs, and they've all been grayed out after I finished it. So the last one is Wewak Garoka with a stop in Mayui, well, an overfly in Mayui. We left with 1,000 pounds, and it has, like, you know, your heading, your distance, 182 nautical miles. All right, we're just now level off at 11,000, so let me pull my torque on back to 1250. A look ahead to see what I'm expecting for weather. It's definitely building, but I'm going to be kind of tracking that way here in a minute. So, my corridor down the valley, up down that valley right there, is looking really nice. So, should be no dramas. This is also this little yellow box up here shows like any notams, things like that for a specific place that you're going to. And let's see, yeah, it's nice because it gives you your max loading and things like that as well on this page. So it's a quick reference. You can just go, okay, I, I can do this, I can do that. The next page is weight and balance. So you've got different flights up here and you can tab through different ones. I'm on the last one right now. I've got six seats on board back there. I've left with a thousand pounds and it's really cool because, I mean, if I have like, let's say two passengers or if I have a bunch of passengers, just maybe um, some PNG people that I'm picking up and I don't have my scale or my scale batteries are dead or something like that to where I can't weigh them up, then I can just hit fill seats at 70, um, which is really nice. Or I can just hit clear load, take them all out. I can change the configuration of my seating. Um, let's just do cancel. And then you can hit each seat one time and it changes like there's a person in there. Or you can manually hold it down and then put, you know, 85 kgs or things like that. You can change the equipment. That's really handy. And then you have underneath here your pods, stuff like that. So let me just show you one that I did this morning. Um, I had a loading of people on there. I just split my loading with my, I had a couple bags underneath. And it's nice because it shows your weight balance envelope right here and if you tap on it it actually shows you where you're going to be landing your zero fuel weight so in this airplane which is nice you could take off with a very very apt cg and as the flight goes on be burning off your fuel but your cg slowly moving forward which is really nice on this airplane because 
a lot of times it will take off with a absolute on the very corner half CG, but it's still on the green box. You guys have seen it before, we've got KG or pounds tab right there because we use everything in pounds for here and KGs is everything else in this country. But we can't change this to KGs, which is kind of a pain. All right, the next page is my depart page. And this one has a few different things. When I take off, I send my departure and basically it sends it through this V2 track here to my home base. Let me know how many people on board, what flight level I'm gonna be, how much fuel I have on board. Takeoff performance, and this is pretty cool is it actually does change it for different places that you go to. So if we go to a bush location with a penalty, it will actually have all that on here, and it will show you where your, you know, 75% is, or where your safe, you know, stopping distances, things like that, and your estimated takeoff roll. I really don't use this as a new pilot. I think this would be very valuable. But after you've done something like thousands of times, like I can just look at a runway with the weight I have on board and go, I'm going to be at this many knots by that specific cone. So I really don't use a lot of these little things on here. We do the runway charts. And the tabs over here are basically as I'm going through my day, it has each place, Hagen, Madang, Wewak, and then back to Garoka once I get over there. So that's really cool next page the map page which I never really used until today I'm starting to use it and really the only thing I'm using on it is my ETA times so it says up here on the top it says my UE is time 5-1 and we also have it on here and it says my estimate my UE is 5-1 and then it says Garoka now this has a couple extra places along the way though so the time is going to be a bit different it says 2-8 this says 2-7 so that's just because it has already set in there my instrument arrival in there. This, you can change between different things, different types of maps and stuff. Again, I really don't use this. I used to use charts and things like that a ton the first couple years flying here. But now I just can look out and go, I know what that mountain is, so I'm not going to really follow along with this. This does have a ton of information on it, but I just don't use it. Next is the arrival which is basically the exact same thing as like the depart, but it just tells you, you know, your strip chart going in, it has it at Garoka right now. Landing performance, it gives you all of that. And then when I land, I hit on the ground and then type in how much fuel I have. And that changes the nav page. It will pop in the next flight, what you have on board, or if you need to fill up or something. The last page is the message page. And this is where I can text somebody's telephone. Um, I can SMS them, I can email them, I can send it to another aircraft. If one of our other aircraft is flying, I need to get a hold of them. Or I can send a message to my flight follower, so, or my, um, my flight coordinator. Very, very handy. That goes through the V2 track, which is a completely different system. So this app right here connects our V2, as well as our four flight, as well as all of our daily flight records as well as our weight and balance. Like basically, this is what we wanted to have nine years ago when I started. What ha encompassed everything into one app, and now it does it. So thank you, Flightspan, for making this app because it's very handy. I like it. <laughs> Makes my job easy. All right, we're approaching Brahman. You can see the track kind of goes in like that. That's because that basically works up the valley the best way with clouds. You guys can see ahead, we've got just clouds on every ridge top that you can see. Not really a clear road to get in. I've got two options here. I can climb up from 11,000 to 14,000 feet, go either through the clouds or over the clouds. Option number two, I could stay at 11,000 and hope for the best, go up to Brahman and work my way in. History has proven that the Asaloka or the Garoka Gap are usually workable. And what I mean by that is they're enough of a gap and the clouds are spread out enough that I can work my way around and through to be able to get through that. So that's the option we're gonna go with today because I don't really have to climb up to 14,000. Although it looks like I could probably get over a lot of it. But it will make a little bit more of an interesting video too. And I just don't really feel like putting oxygen on right now. 
And if you guys have not seen this in another one of my videos where I showed you guys, this is a coffee table album I made for you guys. It's got Inadu on the back. It's not covered in the book, but I cover 40 different locations that we go to here in Papua New Guinea. Most of them are drone pictures that I've taken over the years. And like Kira Wena, like it talks about the airstrip itself, how long it is, how high it is, you know, some things that are challenging about the different places. Or if I had some stuff about the culture of the location, like Mibu, we don't even go to that place. It's been opened and closed a few times over the years. So but I do worldwide shipping on all my items except for my coffee on my website. So go check it out, like my sunglasses, the checklist box. They've got a lot of cool things on there. So if you haven't checked it out, be sure to go check that out. Let's hit our map button here and hit our terrain. It's going to show red, you're dead, yellow, you're within a, basically 100 feet to 1,000 feet to it. So as we get closer, we're going to be well over into these mountains, or 9,000, but my minimum safe is all the way up to 14. So I'm going to have to stay visual to be able to work my way through these mountains up here. So what I'm expecting, kind of looking forward here, is you can see it's dark here, light kind of like a horseshoe, and then dark everywhere around it. So that's really kind of how the clouds are going to probably play out as well. The clouds will be on that first ridge, on the mountains, and on the further one, but right in the middle of them, they'll probably be spread apart. That's just how clouds work here in the mountains, at least here in Papua New Guinea. So by having this on your screen, this really helps me determine how I'm going to fly my flight down valleys with weather, the best option to get in and out of places. Because weather typically starts building on all the mountaintops first and then works out from there. It's autopilot off. Oh. Tango Zulu, 15 miles Kuroka, contact Kuroka Tower 118. Decimal 7 and traffic is from your November Apex 750 departed my Mafu for Goroka at time 0212, not above 9000, estimate Goroka 0225. Copy about traffic contact, tower 15, no, I'm Alright, the moment of truth. Will we make it in visually? I've got high clouds here, I've got high clouds there and a low spot in the middle. That's right where the Osaloka Gap is. So far, it's looking hopeful. It looks like there's a channel right down the middle, right where I need it to go. So that's the nice thing. The more experience you get in flying in the exact same location, Papua New Guinea, you start to see trends with the weather. And then once you start understanding the trends, then you can like kind of predict what to expect. Most times, fairly accurate. Makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Okay, it looks like it looks like I'm looking straight down into the Groka Valley, that dark area. That's what that looks like to me. I'm at 11,000. I have nine miles to go before the ridge line. So I'm going to start heading on down to about 9,200 feet. So if I put it 9,200 feet, it's going to show me real quick when I'm going to get to that altitude so I can adjust my descent. Be like 500, nope, that's too much, go maybe 400 until I get that right about right at the top of the ridge. That way I can skirt under any clouds, but then over top of the ridge. But I'm seeing well into the Garoka Valley. I don't see any rain on my ridges, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep my plowing right on through and keep my speed up for this. Kuroka Tower, November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, Kuroka Tower. Good day, November Tango Zulu. Also local gap this time. Niner Thousand, your circuit, 28. Copy, Romeo, November Alpha. Remember Tango Zulu, runway 35 right, wind light and variable, QNH 1019, track and report left downwind. 1019, track and report left downwind, 35 right, November Tango Zulu. 
As I'm coming through this tighter area, clouds are still lower than me, so I need to keep on coming on down. I'm looking at my winds. I don't want to be zipping across these mountaintop ridges with high winds because there's going to be a lot of turbulence. And I'm very, very light today. So my normal operating speed, probably at the weight I am right now, is like probably like 125 knots, and I'm going 155. So. All right, no dramas. We'll increase our descent here. We're 1,500 feet per minute now, just so we can get under these last clouds right before we track for our left downwind. Landing weight's 5,300 pounds, so 62 knots at the slowest. Probably won't come in that slow. Fuel selectors are good. Our taws, we can re-enable. Our lights and inlets. We have to go around just power up 20 degrees of flaps. Pitch for 12 degrees on the attitude indicator and maneuvers acquired. Kuroko Tower, November Tango, Zulu entering left downwind, 35 right. November Tango, Zulu runway, 35 right, clear to land. 35 right, clear to land, November Tango, Zulu. Up forward, I'll slow us on down. And we'll bring our torque on back to about 400 to 450 or so. Degrees of flaps. Now we'll beam our touchdown area. We'll go 20 degrees of flaps. Up and harness is complete, flaps to go. You know, I just looked up here and just made sure that I had my landing clearance flipped down. These things are so handy. Just there, I was like, did I get landing clearance? And <laughs> you kind of forget sometimes. But now I can let go. Yep, I did flip it. I've got these on my website if you guys want to go check them out. They're so handy for takeoff and landing. Cover all your critical items. In a really quick and easy way to make sure that you are covering your critical items that could potentially kill you or get you in trouble. Small air, I've got them for small airplanes, big airplanes, turbine airplanes, or you can customize exactly what you want to say now. There's base 5800, turning final 5600 feet. 91 knots, it's going a little bit fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and slow on down. I'll go full flaps now, checklist is complete. Turning final, there's 5,600 feet. One knot of tailwind, two knots of tailwind. I have a downdraft right here, because we always have a downdraft right here. I float for a little bit, because I'm coming in about 12 knots faster than my approach speed needs to be, but Slowly start bleeding our speed off right now. A low idle, get our flaps up. Because this is my last flight. Thank you guys for joining me on this flight. I sure do appreciate you guys watching my videos, leaving comments, sharing it with your friends, or wherever else you guys share them. Like I said, be sure to check out this book if you guys haven't already. It's just a nice conversation piece to have if you have friends over, things like that. And if you just want to see a little bit more about Papua New Guinea. Okay, on the ground, landing fuel is 630. Done. Too easy. See you guys next time.